we yearn to know who we are. Genealogy is the study of families, family history, and the tracing of their lineages. Some anthropologists, that's those who study human societies and cultures, believe that the urge to find your family origins is an innate characteristic of man. We strive to place ourselves in a world in order to gain identity. Even young children draw pictures of their families emphasizing their place in it. Artists explore their identities through their art too. They may use self-portraits or symbols that reflect their heritage. Almost every artist has created a self-portrait, and many artists have done numerous self-portraits that chronologically reflect their life. These self-portraits tell us quite a lot about the artist at certain times in their lives. Vincent van Gogh had a short life full of despair and mental illness. While today he is noted for the emotion, beauty, and color of his work, he died at the age of 37 after he shot himself. Rembrandt is considered one of the greatest painters in European history, and during his life, he painted around 80 self-portraits that took him from a young man to an older man. Pablo Picasso created a series of self-portraits from the age of 15 to the age of 90. The evolution of his art styles are seen through this series. Artists are often thought of as solitary creatures. And while many artists have chosen to go it alone, there are many times in histories where artists banded together in guilds. People have always banded together, first for safety, then for community. There's an old saying, many hands make light work. Michelangelo had at least six other artists working with him on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. And there are many ways for people to group. Some of the ways that people identify with a group are by nationality, by cultural heritage or ethnic identity, by sex or gender, gender identity, by class or by affiliation with a group. Keep in mind that this, like many other things we have discussed, is a very fluid meaning and we can usually identify in one or all groups at the same time. A national identity is, is one of the most common ways to group. We're grouped by the country we come from. Sometimes we group ourselves by the country our ancestors came from or from the country we were born in. While this can be very inclusive, this way of identifying can also be very exclusionary. Now we're most familiar with the American flag. We won't get into the whole story of the stars and bars, but when the American flag is raised or presented, we, as Americans, show our patriotic respect. Lately, a lot of American flags have been altered to acknowledge the support of various groups that serve to protect the citizens of the United States. The thin blue line refers to the concept of the police being the line which keeps society from descending into violent chaos. Now here is where a lot of these categories start to mix and match. You may focus on your cultural heritage. For example, if you're Irish, St. Patrick's Day holds a different meaning for you than for others. The same with ethnicity. You may celebrate Kwanzaa or Chinese New Year. When an artist embraces their cultural or ethnic identity, wonderful artworks are created. Mayuko Ono Gray had some artworks exhibited in the ECC gallery last spring, and I was able to see it in person. I was really intrigued by the realism of her pencil drawings. Yes, that's pencil and it's not a photograph, but I was curious about the lines running through it. A little deeper study found that she was trained in calligraphy and she uses those characters in her work. Now that's a pretty abbreviated explanation. Something else to note is that the calligraphy is actually a poem which refers back to the ancient scholar artists in China whose paintings were accompanied by poetry. This area has become more prevalent in society, first focusing on um, the, the prescribed sexual roles of men and women um, and now with gender identity. These kind of artworks challenge our idea of what normal is, air quotes. 
Uh, many images from contemporary artists who focus on this subject are rather shocking, and I really didn't feel comfortable putting them into the PowerPoint. But I would encourage you to, if you were interested, to go ahead and, and research some of that. Many artists have portrayed themselves as the opposite sex. Frida Kahlo even paints a self-portrait with cropped hair and her wearing a suit. This was to symbolize her refusal to conform to traditional gender games. She preferred to see herself as an individual rather than as man or woman. On the left here, we have Andy Warhol. You've seen a lot of his pictures, um, altered image. And on the right, Paula Rigo takes what we would consider um, the normal, what is a normal ballet dancer look like? And she puts uh, middle-aged women into those places. Social class has separated people since the beginning of time. India's caste system is an example of people being categorized by their religion, financials, or ethnicity. And such division still occurs today. The three artworks shown here show the idea of first, second, and third class people. There are many things that can be added to an artwork to emphasize the social class of people in the artwork. Luxurious, colorful clothing versus drab colors with very little detailing. And the type of food shown is also a symbol of class, as is the activity that is taking place. We have thousands of different groups one can belong to, and it wasn't much different in the past. Artisans would have certain guilds. Social clubs give us group affiliations. In high school, you had the athletes, the band or choir kids, the group that was part of the marketing class, the art club, the home ec club. Then we have dance groups, gymnastics groups, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Church, Kiwanis, Rotary, and the list goes on and on and on. Your text says that history suggests that the quality of human survival is best when humans function as a group, allowing for collective support and interaction. You can see that many artists um, portrayed groups of people. Rembrandt was a portrait painter who painted most of his subjects in the group they were affiliated with. These three paintings, all done in the 1600s, show men. Notice that there weren't any women in these groups. Personal identity is really a combination of all the other categories. Um, this slide I know has a lot of information on it, but um, Frida Kahlo is one of those artists um, whose work leaves absolutely no room to wonder about her personal identity. Frida embraced her cultural heritage as she painted about her physical pain, her emotional pain, and her sexual gender identity. Every piece of her work is a look into her life. Now, national and personal identities don't happen overnight. You weren't born with them. They're built on and influenced by your experiences, your environment, your traditions, and your cultural legacies. Artists capture and document society, both the good and the bad. And identities aren't static. If they were, we stereotype people. Since the 1970s, postmodern theories have challenged the traditional notions of ethnic and cultural identity. Globalization, social media, travel, the internet, have given us fluid cultures, which may in turn spark the desire to trace one's heritage. 